Welcome to another video. This is an infinity problem because we're taking a limit as x goes to negative infinity. And remember, we can just plug in infinity whenever we see it. So we have to first understand the direction of the function we're given. So if you look at this closely, if you plug in negative infinity in your mind into this function, this is going to give you infinity because negative raised to the power of 14, because it's an even number, it's going to give you um, infinity. But when you put this in negative infinity here, you're going to get negative infinity. So you have infinity minus infinity, and you cannot subtract infinity from infinity. So that's a problem. If you get here, this is going to be negative infinity times 2 uh, minus 2, and then you're going to get plus infinity. So we have a case of the square root of infinity minus infinity plus infinity but this one is on the square root sign but you can't subtract infinity from infinity and that's a major problem so what strategy do i usually recommend well you multiply it by its conjugate and divide it by its conjugate and because this is now a third the way we see it and somehow the answer is going to show up however there's a tiny little trick that you have to pay attention to so you can get your answer. And that's where it gets interesting. So I suggest you attempt it first before you watch the video, if you can. Otherwise, let's get into it. So like I said, we're going to multiply the limit, the function itself, by its conjugate, which is simply you changing the sign to a plus, okay? And when we do that, let's do it this way. We're going to multiply, let's put this in parenthesis, and we're going to then multiply by the conjugate, which is the same thing as what we have, 4x to the 14, and then we have um, plus x to the 7th, plus 2x to the 7th. Okay, ah, okay, that works. And then we divide it by this same square root of 4x to the 14 plus x to the 7th plus 2x to the 7th. Okay, now this is what I want you to see, that whenever you do this, don't struggle with doing the calculation because something always happens. When you multiply a third by its conjugate, watch this. Let's say I gave you the square root of... 2 minus 3 and then I ask you to multiply it by its conjugate the square root of 2 plus 3 the reason we do this is because when you multiply so let's do the foiling this times this will give you square root of 4 which is 2 this times this will give you plus 3 root 2 this times this will give you minus 3 root 2 and this times this will give you minus the square of 3, which is 9. Do you observe that this and this are gone? What you have left are whatever was under the radical sign and the square of the second term with a minus. So, clearly, whatever you have done, which will always happen, is now the limit as x goes to negative infinity. What's on top is just what is under the square root sign it's going to come out 4x to the 14 plus x to the 7th minus the square of this, which is going to be 4x to the 14. And the denominator is just this guy we have not touched, which is the square root of 4x to the 14 plus x to the 7th plus 2x to the 7th. So this is the limit you now need to take. But we know that 4x to the 14th minus 4x to the 14th will cancel out. So we can get rid of these from here. Get rid of this. So what we have left is just x to the 7th over this. And we need to take the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So we have simplified this. We got this over this and I've rewritten it here. And this is where the job begins. Because at this point, what I want you to look at is the denominator and ask yourself, what is the highest degree of the polynomial in the denominator? Let's say it's a polynomial. Well, this has 
14 inside a square root but when you take the square root of 14 I mean you take the square root of x to the 14th you're gonna get x to the 7th so this is x to the 7th um, definitely this is smaller and this is x to the 7th so it appears that x to the 7th is the power we're dealing with here right so what we're gonna do is say we're gonna divide everything by x to the 7th okay so this is equal to the limit equal equal let me just put equal signs everywhere here okay this is equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity of we're going to have x to the seventh divided by x to the seventh over here we're going to have the square root of 4x to the 14 plus x to the seventh divided by x to the seventh and here we're going to have plus 2x to the seventh divided by x to the seventh so x to the seventh will cancel this x to the seventh cancels this we have one here we have two but what are we going to get here and this is where you have to do the right thing if you don't do the right thing you're going to be wrong well that's the meaning that's just logical right and what is the right thing watch this this is equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity up here we got one right here I have two but what do I have here what I have here actually looks complicated it is important that I push this x to the seventh under the square root sign and when I push x to the seventh under the square root sign it becomes x to the 14 and then I can deal with what's inside but how do I know what to push inside now watch this I'm going to write something this is going to be 4x to the 14th plus x to the 7th divided by x to the 7th. But I'm going to change the form of my x to the 7th. I'm going to write it as the square root of x to the 14th. But I'm picking the negative version of it. Because then I can combine the x to the, the square root, put everything together. But why do I have a negative here? Because if I take the square root of x to the 14th, what do you think I'm going to get? I'm going to get x to the 7th, which was the original. But when you take the square root of x to the 14th, in this case, it is plus or minus x to the seventh depending on whether x to the seventh was positive or x to the seventh was negative and you know that x to the seventh is definitely negative in this case because x is approaching negative infinity it's going all the way to infinity so any number you're dealing with is going to be negative okay so that's why this has to be the negative version of this because if x to the 7th is negative, I have to put a negative so that I can get back the original x to the 7th. Because x is approaching negative infinity. If x was approaching infinity, it would be a different ball game. You wouldn't need this negative here. Okay, this is the hardest part of this work. And if you understand this, then we can move on. I'm going to get rid of this. Let me explain one more time. Whenever you need to push this in, you have to ask yourself, when you take the square root, are you going to get a positive or a negative? Well, because x is approaching negative infinity, you have to do the negative version of it. Okay? So it's the negative version of this that goes in here. So we can rewrite this. So we got the limit as x goes to negative infinity negative infinity come on of we got one here that's where it's supposed to be actually and then i'll write 4x i could have written that here and saved let's keep going so this is going to be equal to 4x to the 14th 
over x to the 14th because now I've combined the square root sign. So this x to the 14th will divide this and divide this plus x to the 7th over x to the 14th and then plus okay we just have plus 2 here because we already resolved that okay what do we have this is equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over the square root of this is going to be 4 and what would this be this would be plus 1 over x to the 7th plus 2. Oh, the negative sign. Don't forget the minus. If you pay very close attention to what we have here, just watch this. As x goes to negative infinity, anything that has x in the denominator is going to go to 0. So watch, you're going to end up having just 4 left because this is going to go to 0. So that this would be minus square root of 4 which is minus 2 plus 2. So in the denominator, we're going to end up with a 0. And remember, when you divide by 0, we can't divide by 0. What's going to happen is you're going to have infinity or negative infinity or undefined, right? But there's something that we need to do. Are we approaching 0 from the right or from the left? Because if it is a one-sided limit, you can claim that it's infinity or it's negative infinity, depending on what direction you're approaching from, right? So let's figure out what direction we're approaching zero from. Now look, because x is approaching negative infinity, anytime you plug in x here, this fraction is going to be a negative number, even if it's very small, right? So take a very small number away from 4. So the number under the square root sign at every point will be less than 4. So the square root will always be less than 2, right? Because you're subtracting, remember this negative, if you add a negative to 4, it's going to be 3 point something. And that will mean that the negative number we'll get ultimately just before we get to 0 will be less than 2. So that means you're adding a number less than 2, I mean you're subtracting a you're adding a negative number that is less than 2 to a positive 2, which means whatever is down here will always be positive and when you, before you get to 0. And that's what you call your one-sided limit, so that what we have will be equal to 1. And what do you have left here? You're going to have 0 approaching from the right. It's very important that you do that analysis before you write your final answer because if you do 1 over 0, which I did the previous time, you're going to end, it becomes undefined. You don't know where you're going, right? But if you're, if you're approaching 0 from the right, then your answer is going to be positive infinity. If you're approaching 0 from the left, your answer is going to be negative infinity. So we can confidently say our answer here is positive infinity. Never stop learning. Doesn't stop learning. Stop living. Bye-bye.